evening. It's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. A while back, we did some shows where my cat, Miss E.T., uh, served as the centerpiece, and it was at that time that I realized how, how just, ma uh, excuse me, how many animal lovers we have in, uh, in the friends that's watching the show. And right before we took that uh, quick trip to Colorado, I was lucky enough to uh, find a dog show that was at the St. Martin's Pavilion. And so what we did is we went over there and took some pictures of dogs for you. And uh, before sharing that with you, I'd like to introduce you to my guest, Wayne Buckner. How are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah, and then we have Jenny, one of your, um, one of your greyhounds. Yes, Jenny is a five-year-old greyhound. Mm -hmm. She is not an ex-racer. She was not a racer. She was uh, adopted uh, from a litter when she was uh, about eight weeks old. Mm -hmm. So she never was on the racetrack. Oh, how wonderful. So, so what you, you know what I think we want to do? I think we want to show the friends the clip and then we're going to go into, into details all about the greyhounds because that's going to be lengthy. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, we want to, um, we want to share some of the other friends and some of uh, the purposes for some of the dogs. Sure. And um, she's just having a good time while we're doing that. Hmm? It's, it's the way you see her at home too. Yeah, she's just wonderful. 40 so. mile an hour couch potato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I had an Afghan one time, and he was pretty set in his ways, too. So mm -hmm. if we could uh, have that clip of the dog show at St. Martin's Pavilion in August, I believe it was in August. And Hi. We'll Hi. Came to see a wonderful animal today. Well, this is Arrow. He's a Scottish deer hound. Um, his registered name is Sindar's Quick Arrow, and he did very well. Today was our very, very first show, and he did very, very well. He's a real good boy. He's um, 14 months old, so he's just a pup still. He's got a lot of growing left to do. And they're oh. excellent breed, very calm in nature. How beautiful. Yeah, he's a good boy. He's yeah. A good boy. Want to see his head? Look. Yeah. Look at that head. Look at that How head. How pretty. <laughs> Why, thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah. She's um, just won the breed today. And she's a miniature poodle. And she's local. So am I. Beautiful. Why, thank you. <laughs> okay, now we're ready. He's looking at me like. His name is Parker, you said? Parker. Mm -hmm. Hello, Parker. Good boy. And what kind of breed of dog is he? He's an American Cocker Spaniel. Oh, how beautiful. Mm -hmm. How beautiful. So, no doubt he'll get a ribbon. Beautiful animal. Why? Thank you. You're welcome. And here we have some last minute grooming. Now, you were telling me? These puppies don't have any little kids to play with, so it's nice when other people come by with their children. And the children are very kind and very gentle. I let them in to play with the puppies. Desi. And what breed of dogs are they? These are papillons. Oh, papillons. How wonderful. Why, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yes, yeah, someone's taking a nap. No, no. And here's a Dalmatia. He's practicing for his um, show here in the ring. I'm trying to be optimistic, but it's All right. This is a, um, a hound. What, what breed is this? Old English Sheepdog. Old English Sheepdog. Beautiful. Here's some judging being done. Last minute treats. There he stands so proud. Yeah, two. The one on the left is a hairless Chinese crested, and the one on the right is a powder puff Chinese crested. Oh, how cool. So we have little ones and big ones, and thank you very much. Samoan. I said that wrong, Samoyan. Yes. He's 
beautiful. He's just a puppy. Like this? Uh, another lady told me she had a puppy. It's amazing how they mind, you know? Well, we start training them when they're very young. Yeah, very young. Why, thank you. Big one's the mist. Is somebody making friends? No, Thank you very much. Okay, Tessa, you pet bug. Come on. Hello. They gonna you gonna be on TV? Smile. It, it's beautiful. What kind of breed Forest is it? Russian Wolfhound. Oh, okay. So everybody's having a good day here. Very good day. Very nice day. Okay. Well, thank you for smiling for me. No judging. Oh, great. And in case that you don't have a live animal, there's always a place to stop where you can get a friend made out of porcelain. Patrick is visiting in the pediatric unit at St. Peter Hospital, and Wiley is going to be visiting at Mother Joseph's? Yes. Mother Joseph's. We'll be visiting at Mother Joseph's. So in, so in essence, what you do doing to, you cheer up the patients? Yes, we cheer up the patients. Um, Patrick and I visit in pediatrics, so uh -huh. he lays on their bed and he, and he gets stroked by the patient. He usually cheers him up all the way in. Yeah. Oh, how wonderful. Yes. It's got such good therapy. Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. And we go into the psychiatric unit at St. Pete's and uh, rehab and do a lot of rehab work uh -huh. where they can uh, they do a lot of uh, uh, maybe throwing the ball and fetch or something to work with people that maybe have a stroke. On my shows, I encourage people to blend with animals, and, uh, but it's always my opinion, so I'm very happy that you were willing to share professional opinion. No, and I'm not a professional, I'm just new at this program. Danny is the professional. <laughs> okay, so we'll ask her something yeah. then. She knows, Nanny knows this program back and forth, so, but she, uh... Do you have a question that... Uh, well... Go ahead. How our animals work well with the patients and how we cheer the patients up. Oh gosh, the um, if if you're here, then you're obviously a dog lover, animal lover, and you know the kinds of things that you get from your animal. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the sensory stimulation, you know, petting. You don't get that in a hospital. You don't get to to touch or be touched in a way other than a clinical, you know, a doctor looking you over for medical reasons, but when we bring our animals in, we bring in a piece of the outside. There are often, um, you know, patients who have left their own pets behind and miss them terribly and can't have them in the hospital, so they get to spend time with our animals. Um, we visit in the psychiatric unit. I don't know if you already told them, psychiatric unit, mm -hmm. pediatrics, and we do therapy. We do physical therapy, mm -hmm. medical rehabilitation, and we Good also visit boy. with the old folks in, in uh, Mother Joseph, and especially in Mother Joseph's. Mm -hmm. That's where that sensory stimulation comes in, where they get to feel the beautiful soft fur, and they get to some, um, oftentimes the elders are, um, disabled one way or the other with um, having lost one or more senses. So if they can't see, they can hear the dog bark and panting, or they can feel the dog's fur. Uh -huh. You know, if they can't hear, they can they can see or feel. And um, boy, the responses that we get are just, just incredible. Yeah, like I, I was telling her, um, I encourage people to mingle with animals, you know. And uh, but I've never had an expert, so... Oh, I lost your face. You found yeah, an you expert. Guys. And what are you taping? Is this your own personal tape? Uh, yes, I... This is the display for um, St. Peter's Hospital. From the nice ladies I just talked to. These are chihuahuas. 
What are these? Ba what are these? We made a new friend. And what kind of dog is that that you're holding? Shih Tzu. Shih Tzu. You can't even say that. She's, is it she? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. She's beautiful. I know. Uh -huh. Why, thank you. <laughs> I think I miss most of the judging here. These were all the Dalmatians. Well, wait, maybe they'll take another star back. They're all waiting to be signed up for the judging. Winner's dog, number 25. Winner's bitch, number 24. One hundred and one Dalmatians, not quite, but very close. It's a whole lot of them. And here's the judging of the little bitty ones. Come here, Cal. No problem. Oh, cool. We go back to the Dalmatians, they're doing something. Just beautiful animals. What a beauty we have here. Oh, what a beauty we have here. Well, when you're that pretty, you can turn your head ever which way you want to. How oh, wonderful. Uh -huh. Of course, all my classmates like to hold my hand. Well, so many people here. She's beautiful. <laughs> you don't know my son. He will try to do Too hot. Too yeah. hot, probably. Thank you very much. Bitten Terriers? Yep. And they're both, what, 11 months old? <laughs> breed from Tibet. They've only been in the United States since the mid-50s. There are not a great many of them in the United States. They're happy. I talk about Tibet on my show quite often, about the llamas and everything, so... Yeah. I'm, one of the things that I find amazing is how young these animals are. I've owned mm -hmm. dogs over the years, and they just didn't want to mind until they were like two, you know. <laughs> oh, they're happy as children. They love being with people. They have to be with people. And they're going to make you laugh. Yeah. Well, there's very few things that came out of Tibet that wasn't spiritual or That's wonderful. Right. They're known as the luck bringers. Oh, they are, yeah. Oh, are they, holy they were never sold. Yeah. They were only given to very, very special people. Charmers. In fact, the two dogs that came out of Tibet in 1927 were given to a doctor practitioner who took them back to England. Uh -huh. And that's where the breed really got started. Why, thank you for sharing that with me. Well, you're more than welcome. What a beauty. He is beautiful. I had two Afghans in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. They were fun breed. Just wonderful. It's the only one I've seen so far. It's they were on about 10 o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you very much. And it's almost the end of the day. The animals are getting a little restless. So I think that concludes our little clip of the dog show. That we ran into in uh, August of 1999. And there you have it, the dog show at St. Martin's um, College, um, actually on the other side of the pavilion. And what struck me uh, of so much interest was how each dog had, a, each breed had a story, they had a job, and they had a purpose. And so, now that we've shared this, now I'm going to ask you, um, Wayne, what got you interested in greyhounds? Well, 
about three years ago, mm -hmm. my wife and I uh, went into uh, the PetSmart in Lacey. Ah. And we were just going in to uh, get our dog food and things for our other dogs. Mm -hmm. we, we have uh, two other dogs as well as our greyhounds. Uh, we have a, a terrier and then we have a chihuahua. And they happened to uh, uh, be having a booth uh, from uh, in there and they had some greyhounds there. And they were just real nice looking dogs. Uh, they were very even tempered. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't barking, they weren't snipping in each other, and everyone was kind of laying, laying down just like you see uh, Jenny here. And uh, it was put on by uh, Greyhound Pets, Inc. Mm -hmm. out of uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Mm -hmm. And we uh, met with uh, Paul and Kelly Hacker, who were the uh, adoption reps at that time, and uh, talked and uh, filed an application to uh, possibly foster a uh, Greyhound, and probably the next night we got a call from them. Didn't take long, did it? No. Yeah, but <laughs> they had dogs that uh, yeah. were looking for foster homes at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, we live in Ro the Rochester area, and we we have uh, 1.3 acres, and we decided that we would go ahead and try the uh, foster. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, first dog that we bought to our home, her name was Hope. Mm -hmm. And she is what you would call a red brindle, mm -hmm. kind of the uh, same markings as uh, Jenny here, only a lighter red, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, quite a bit lighter. Yes, Jenny. And um, she was in our home for about three days as a foster. And just due to the nature mm -hmm. of the uh, dog and the uh, actions and how well she got along with our children and our other uh, dogs, we adopted her. Yeah, a friend of mine adopted uh, your Jake, I think is the name of Jake, Jake yeah, and that's how I ended up As a matter of fact, I believe you have a picture you. of Jake. We do, yeah. Yes. And, and she said, well, Lillian, you got to do a story on that. Um, uh, could you give me a little background on, on the animals themselves well, as far as uh, the they, breed? and They actually, uh, we have been able to uh, trace back uh, about 500 B.C. Mm -hmm. Originated uh, in Egypt. Now ah. they're they, uh, they're known as the Prince of Dogs, or the Dog of Princes. Ah. So the um, they were um, mainly kept for the running of hares. They not mm -hmm. they they it was for sport. It wasn't to hunt. Mm -hmm. It was it was for sport. They loved the grace of the dog. I need to say something. Here, excuse me for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know that about the dogs. And so if you look at the set, you know, the friends know that there is nothing coincidental here. And um, I brought the, my Egyptian vase and my aunt, Lisa, which, by the way, is Egyptian. And she was the president of the Humane Society in Sweden at one time. Mm -hmm. And I think it's sort of awesome how we got Egyptian things, and I didn't know that about the dogs, and they come mm -hmm. from Egypt. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, but I wanted to put that in here. Mm -hmm. So well, back to your story. Well, and, um, at that time, um, you could uh, start seeing them on, on Greek vases. Mm -hmm. uh, they had uh, references to them, and of course, the Egyptians had uh, references to them in their, in their tombs, the murals on their tombs. Um, uh, Afghan. They moved into Afghan. Mm -hmm. They were also in the uh, Roman Empire. Um, they moved into uh, Russia and Persia also. Uh, they didn't really, the first ones that were ever really shown in the United States were about 1877, and they were shown in the uh, Westminster uh, Dog mm -hmm. Show. Ah. And there were 18 entered Wow! for the uh, first show in 1877. Yeah, like the lady who said about the uh, about the Tibetan dogs, they didn't arrive here till 1952, mm -hmm. so it just took a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they, uh, their health, they're bred for their health. Mm -hmm. they're, they, they don't suffer from the hip dysplasia as most large uh, dogs do, yeah. and that's mainly their their weight is kept down. Um, 
Jenny is probably, oh, well, I'd say about three, maybe four pounds above racing weight, which mm -hmm. is a good pet weight. Five to seven pounds is a good pet weight. Um, she's about three or four pounds, I would say, above racing weight. And uh, for her, that's a, a good weight. She's mm -hmm. probably about 56 pounds. Yeah, they, um, I had an Afghan. Actually, had several Afghans, which come in almost the same category. Mm -hmm. in, uh, they, they, are, they are a member of the Sidehound family. Family, and I remember one time um, I was in my kitchen, and a lady came, and she was very upset, and she said that uh, she was driving up Martin Way, uh, uh, 25 miles an hour, and here came this dog doing 35 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And she hit it, and, and so to, just to show how fast they can right. run, the dog didn't get hurt, but it really yeah they they have car. they have been mm -hmm. known to run as fast as 43 miles an hour. Ah, yeah, so she was pretty close on her estimate mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now I understand, um, uh, Jenny. <laughs> there, there is a reason why why Jenny isn't. Uh, it didn't qualify for, for racing? Yeah, She's a special dog? Yeah, she is a little bit of a special needs girl. Mm -hmm. As I said, she did not make it to the uh, racetrack. She was found to be a hermaphrodite. Mm -hmm. So she had both uh, male and female uh, characteristics. Mm -hmm. And so uh, very young, after she was adopted, she was uh, neutered mm -hmm. uh, because at that time her name was Jetty. Mm -hmm. And uh, they uh, found that... Uh, the prominent factor at that time was her male mm -hmm. uh, parts. And up until last year, I would say probably about five months ago, they, uh, she was uh, being fostered with um, my mother at that time mm -hmm. and found to start having a cycle. Mm -hmm. And so we took her to uh, the uh, local vet in uh, Rochester and he uh, had said that uh, we will al allow this to uh, go on, and if at the end of two weeks it uh, subsides, then um, we will know that she is going into heat and is going to have to uh, have the, those needs met. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, at the end of that two-week period, her cycle stopped, and so um, she was taken in to uh, be uh, spayed, Mm -hmm. and found that a full set of female genitals was present also. And Could so they be. were removed, and she is definitely now on the female female side. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have the uh, male size. She doesn't have the male temperament. Um, but, and very much all girl. She's just beautiful, yeah. And so... Now we we get back to um, to, to the racing and they, they, mm -hmm. that's what they are raised for and then um, the main purpose is here for people to adopt them so they don't right. uh, meet this horrible right. fate. So uh, our organization is one of many organizations uh, across the country. Uh, there are m eight major organizations that run across the country and many more smaller ones that are local uh, to the uh, uh, different areas uh, from uh, coast to coast. And uh, we, we um, typically, Greyhound Pets, uh, we get our dogs come from the uh, uh, track in Tucson, Arizona, mm -hmm. and we also get uh, dogs out of Colorado. Uh, we don't have uh, dogs uh, coming from Idaho no more as uh, Coeur d'Alene closed their track. Uh, and the uh, track in uh, Oregon has its own adoption uh, process right there at the track. So pretty much most of our dogs, uh, we do get some that are returned when uh, people are moving. Mm -hmm. uh, they may have moved here from somewhere else and then for some reason they're no longer able to uh, keep the dog and so then they turn the dog over to us and we find a new home for it. Um, so, so going public and talking about it a lot has made a difference to these yes, animals. Yes, there are. Say? It's about even now for the last two to three years that as many are being adopted and having uh, homes as are being put uh, put down, and of course we want to see that number 
increase mm -hmm. on the uh, Finding Home side. And most all the uh, organizations are all um, um, volunteers. We have no paid staff. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, people who uh, go and uh, actually transport the dogs, they take their time off from work, they go down, they take the trailer, they go mm -hmm. down, they pick up however many dogs they're going to pick and then bring them up to uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And there they, their uh, medical needs are uh, taken care of. All the dogs are uh, spayed or neutered mm -hmm. uh, when they come off the track. Uh, so they take, they come to the, uh, the organization and these uh, spay and neutering is, uh, takes place. Uh, shots are bought up to date and uh, teeth are cleaned and uh, any injuries that they may have uh, occurred on the uh, track uh, would be uh, addressed uh, with, the, uh, with the vets there in uh, mm -hmm. Coeur d'Alene. And then once uh, everyone is set and, uh, and have all of their medical needs met, then the dogs are dispersed between Montana, mm -hmm. Idaho, and the different parts in Washington, and some do make it up into Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we have representatives as far north as uh, in Vancouver, uh, Canada. Um, so so, so uh, since you have no public funding, so... Donations, uh, do donations private things, donations, yeah. yes, uh, yeah. private donations or uh, donations that you, know, you can leave at the uh, meet and greet or the uh, buying of uh, items like you see here on the uh, table, our t-shirts and, things, and, yeah. and, and uh, coffee mugs mm -hmm. and when we have uh, jewelry, the uh, proceeds from those also go mm -hmm. uh, back to uh, help bring more dogs and to help pay for the, uh, the uh, um, medical care that's needed. Yeah. The medical care just doesn't stop once they reach Coeur d'Alene. You have the dogs who come over and they're in foster care for however long. Mm -hmm. If something should happen that they fall ill or they get injured during that time, they have to be looked after at that time exactly. so that there's not an extra cost to the mm -hmm. uh, foster family. Yeah. So no, we, in, we in, have to meet those medical needs also. You know, to be a foster family, uh, apartment living wouldn't be very, very uh, good for Apartment them. living is, is not recommended. Uh -huh. uh, the dogs, typically, they're sighthounds. They need to have Outside windows where them. they can look out. Uh -huh. um, they need to uh, have a yard, uh -huh. and a fence yard is required by our organization. Uh, other organizations, uh, I can't speak specifically, uh -huh. but for our organization, we do uh, require a home visit. Uh, we do require um, a f fully fenced yard, and the uh, uh, we recommend approximately a three and a half to a four foot uh, fence to uh, keep them from oh, yeah, uh, they deciding they, that maybe they they, they, they might over. try to uh, yeah, jog it. over the top. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had probably 36, 37 fosters come through our home, and we have a four foot high fence, and have never had one even try to uh, mm -hmm. jump our jump our fence and even our own dogs and we do have one uh, male uh, Wilson who's very large mm -hmm. and uh, he doesn't try either so uh, and, yeah. and and like you said you they were children friendly yes we have uh, we have three daughters that mm -hmm. are home and they range from uh, ages of 8 to uh, 15 mm -hmm. and then we also have uh, friends who come over and they have uh, uh, children that are quite a bit younger than that. Uh, but each dog is um, its own individual. Yeah, some dogs, right. there are some dogs that uh, we can't place in a home with uh, children because they just <coughs> uh, won't um, adapt. Mm -hmm. uh, the crying, uh, very young children, crying may scare them. Yeah. Uh, they may not come out of a corner. Uh, Anytime you have a dog and items are down on their level, especially children, yeah. where you're looking them in the face, they, they deem that as a challenge. Oh. And uh, they, they, they can become protective of their space because of that. Yeah. So uh, each dog has to be uh, put into uh, foster homes. We bring them over, we bring them over and we put them into foster homes. We don't just bring a dog home. And, say, yeah, and then yeah. and give yeah, it to you. Right. Yeah. Uh, we bring them over. We put them in foster homes, and they're checked to uh, see whether or not they're cat safe. How well they do around cats. Mm -hmm. Whether they're uh, how well they do around smaller dogs. How well they do with uh, children, and uh, 
then all of these uh, um, traits are annotated and then we try to uh, fit the dog with the um, applications as they, they come in, the uh, wants and the needs of the uh, uh, potential adopting families and then the uh, wants and the needs of the dog so that we try to match them yeah. up. We, we don't like to adopt and then turn around and have to uh, have take to the dog back yeah. in, a, in a week because it's, it's tough on the dogs, it's tough on the families and uh, so uh, we try to get a good match the first time around. How old, on an average, is the dog by the time you get, get uh, him? Or we her? have had them as young as 18 months. Oh. Uh, as, I, as I said just before the show, we got two in most recently that were 18 months old each. And they could be retired at that early for uh, any, any number of reasons. It could be an uh, injury. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they didn't show any interest in the uh, training. Uh, maybe there was a, a problem uh, with the uh, handler um, we don't we don't find dogs at least that that we have had that have been mistreated mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, usually uh, a problem with an injury or they are no longer uh, performing mm -hmm. you know uh, they're given a certain number of races to uh, make some money it, mm -hmm. uh, and if they don't uh, perform during that allotted amount of time, then they can be uh, sent to organizations like ours, mm -hmm. or they can be sent to uh, be uh, put to sleep. And we, we just want to see more of them fall into Indeed. our hands. Your hands, yeah. Now, this might put you on the spot a little bit, but maybe you, you could muddle through this with me. What are your personal feelings on dog racing? Personal feelings, I don't have a yes or no attitude mm -hmm. that it's right or that it's, uh, that it's wrong. Uh, I personally, if anything that can be done to allow the dog to do what it was uh, actually raised to do, to it's do. running okay. is what it was actually bred to do so, if you can allow the uh, dog to do exactly what it was bred to do, that's then I think that the dog should be allowed to do that. That's a very refreshing view. And yeah. um, they've done it since 500 BC. So I I can't say that no, it's wrong, and I can't say no that it's right. But if uh, if that's why they were bred, then why not let them do what they I were bred to do? Let them do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I didn't know how you was going to answer that. I put you on the spot there a little bit, but that's pretty much how, how, how I look at it too. You, sometimes when we have, when people is trying to be on the opposite side of an issue, mm -hmm. then it becomes a real um, tug of war, so to speak. And mm -hmm. so I'm glad that we, we didn't have to go there. So yeah. that's really wonderful. And, and uh, I don't remember, I, you did tell me how old Jenny was? A uh, five. Five. Mm -hmm. is, is that pretty old? Um, the average uh, retirement for most racers is between four and six. Now and I'm talking about lifespan it. here. Now okay. lifespan, they can live to be between 12 and 15 years oh, of age. So, so she's, she's still mm -hmm. still fairly young. She's on the older end as far as the racing, but uh, on life expectancy, she's She's coming up on, on middle age, maybe. She's grown up. That's yeah. right, middle age. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's, just, she's just wonderful. Uh, and she, yeah. as you can see, when as soon as I stop petting her, she just loves to be loved, and she loves to have her attention, and loves yeah. to have her tummy rubbed. And as soon as I stop, then uh, she wants to let me know that, no, you're not done yet. Mm-hmm. Well, we probably started something. What? That's all right. What? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And your wife shares your passion with the dogs? Uh, yes, and actually she has probably a little more of the passion mm -hmm. than, than I have. I, uh, until, and up until we actually uh, got our first dog, I had kind of a, a fear of dogs because I, I happened to be one of the unfortunate ones that was bit by a rabbit dog when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for a long time I, I wouldn't have a dog. Yeah. And uh, we got uh, our first our first dog, our first year of marriage, which was the uh, first dog that my wife had ever owned. 
and we got a terrier. And uh, then, as I said, when we went to um, PetSmart, and it, they had their meet and greet there that day, mm -hmm. and we just fell in love with uh, one dog in particular. Her name was Hope. Yeah, and, that's uh, what you said. And we, uh, we adopted her. And a year later, <laughs> we adopted our second, mm -hmm. and that's our male. And we, his name is Wilson. And uh, so we, we adopted him a year later. So now we have our, our own two, and then we uh, have fosters. Uh, currently, we have, we have one foster in our home, as well as uh, our other two dogs. So how many foster homes a month are you looking for? Does that vary? We're, it, it just depends on how many dogs are uh, readily uh, available and ready to uh, make the trip uh, over this way. The uh, last time, they bought over 12 dogs. Um, mm. And we have um, um, foster homes from here to uh, the Canadian border. Yeah. And uh, it just depends on uh, um, like how many uh, homes are available. We're always looking for fosters. Uh, we have an uh, application uh, process for also being a uh, uh, foster home. And uh, then the, uh, we'll also come out and uh, take a look at the home. Now, when we say a home visit, that doesn't mean that we're coming out and saying that you can't have a dog. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing is we uh, come out and look for any hidden dangers that may be present for the dog, for the dog. that you may not be aware of so that uh, it can be addressed or um, so that the uh, individual who's either going to be doing the fostering or doing the uh, adopting isn't going to have a dog for uh, two hours and run outside. The dog's going to run outside and maybe a nail sticking out of the fence. Their skin is very thin. Very thin, yeah. And te will tear very easy. And so we don't want uh, them to uh, pick up an injury of that nature mm -hmm. and uh, wind up with a vet bill within you know, the first couple hours of being in the home. And, um, and they travel well? Yes, uh, mm -hmm. Jenny travels real well. Uh, our uh, dogs, we have a minivan, and mm -hmm. we just removed the uh, center seat, and <laughs> that's our that's our uh, doggy transport. And uh, they uh, uh, have traveled uh, to Eastern Washington with us, mm -hmm. uh, as far as um, Spokane uh, from here, and uh, we don't have any problems as long as you make your uh, frequent. Uh, rest stops and we didn't yeah. have any problems with uh, illness or uh, accidents as long as uh, you address their needs also. Yeah, she's just a beautiful animal. And, and Jake, is, um, Jake is white. Jake is no? beautiful white, yeah. yes. Yeah. And Jake, Jake was fostered at our home for a while mm -hmm. and uh, fostered uh, and uh, him and Hope got along real well. And I'm, I'm assuming the maintenance, uh, as far as uh, beauticians, is cheaper than an Afghan. Oh yes, that much. Was, that's much, very costly. Uh, much, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they they do have to uh, have uh, their nails trimmed. Their nails mm -hmm. grow uh, quite quickly, so their nails uh, need to be uh, trimmed um, uh, quite frequently. Uh, we do ours about every two weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, try to keep them uh, uh, short. Uh, on the uh, tracks, some of the uh, tracks, they will uh, let them grow uh, a little longer because of sand and 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 the uh, finish of the uh, tracks, so that they have uh, the ability to be able to grab uh, in in their cornerings. But uh, most most of uh, the dogs, once uh, we get them, you know, they asphalt and and uh, even in your yard, uh, it's good to uh, keep them short. Mm -hmm. And uh, their ears, of course, just like any other uh, dog, you want to uh, keep them clean, and then their teeth. Yeah. And uh, most of them are very good about uh, allowing you around their mouth and, and uh, you know, brushing their teeth. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, of course, uh, um, canine uh, toothpaste, uh, most of it is uh, chicken flavored. And so they. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. They, uh, we got a, a wound up again. Yeah, just a beautiful animal. This is when she, when you first came, you know, she was just so agreeable immediately. Yeah. Oh. And, she, she's, uh, and you'll find that most of the uh, greyhounds have the uh, same 
uh, temperament. Mm -hmm. uh, you yes. you do have, I mean, you, as with uh, any other uh, species of a, a dog, you will have those that uh, want to be the uh, alpha mm -hmm. or the dominant. And, uh, and that will be both the male and female, not just on the uh, male side or on the female side. You'll, but you'll have, have them on both. We have that with people too, Jenny, so that's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see, where, did, did, do you know if we left out anything? Uh, we did list uh, um, your email address. Oh, uh, the uh, uh, email did. address for uh, Greyhound Pets itself is greyhoundpetsinc.org. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, Kelly and I have uh, greatpets at yahoo.com. And then we also have our, our home uh, email, which is uh, kwbuckner at uswets.net. Ah, that's, uh, we don't have that one. And, uh, but with that was, it's going to be listed at the end of the show, so the okay. friends can get and a chance they to can, write uh, that down. Uh, um, we, we always uh, answer emails, mm -hmm. and uh, especially in interest, in, whether it be an interest in a certain dog, mm -hmm. whether it be interest in uh, volunteering, uh, or we have uh, those who, um, uh, email us to let us know that they have items that they would like to donate to us, blankets. Wow. Uh, blankets are always good uh, and always help for our bedding. Um, food, we've had those who have had uh, uh, pets pass away mm -hmm. and still have uh, food and they have donated uh, their food to uh, the uh, organization. And um, of course funds uh, are always gladly accepted. And, uh, I know. They can I know the feeling. <laughs> yes, it's amazing what we can do, <coughs> what we can do with nothing sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a, a love for mm -hmm. people or animal, and it's, it's just, just it's just, just amazing. Going. Yeah. Amazing to uh, find how many how many uh, people there are out there that are, are really interested in these uh, animals mm -hmm. once they once they actually go to a meet and greet or and actually uh, see. Uh, for themselves, uh, how they are. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, many people, uh, they never have really seen a greyhound mm -hmm. except for what they see on TV. And do you have regular meetings? Um, oh, we, in, in we meet, we meet here have? in uh, Lacey. We meet twice a month. Twice a month. At the PetSmart in Lacey. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so do uh, all of the uh, others up and down the uh, Puget Sound area. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have them in Puyallup, we have them in Tacoma, we have them in Seattle, Linwood. Um, if they would just go to their uh, local uh, uh, PetSmart and look on the uh, uh, adoption calendars, mm -hmm. they actually have a calendar there and we'll let them know uh, when they're going to be there mm -hmm. and the uh, times. Each one is different. It's not all on the same day and uh, different times. Here at uh, Lacey, we're there on Sundays twice a month, and we're there from one in the afternoon till four. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this show goes to other places. It goes to Anchorage and Lansing, Michigan, and it goes to uh, mm -hmm. uh, Cannon City, Colorado. So check with uh, either they can, they somebody's could even They could even email, they could email us, and, and uh, we can uh, put them in touch with yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's where with I was the going with that. adoption um, reps in their local area. Uh, mm -hmm. It may not be with the uh, Greyhound Pets, it might be with Greyhound Friends or another organization, but we can let them know uh, who's close to their area. Okay. And also I want to uh, tell, tell the friends, if you like shows of that nature, uh, you need to sort of call me and let me know and then maybe we can fe feature other breeds also. And um, it's certainly very mild-tempered. Um, it's and that, a, that's, yeah, the, that's the one thing that, uh, that, that people are really amazed with, the first thing in that and how soft their coat actually, actually is. <coughs> and they, the, uh, just little kids mm -hmm. just, just love it. And uh, most of them will, will, will give uh, kids kisses and, and licks and, and um, as with any other dog, though, you always, you know, even at the uh, meet and greet, you want to uh, check to uh, make sure that um, 
then it's okay before allowing the children to uh, get up close. Uh, there's usually a handler with each dog. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to have a handler with, uh, with every dog and then at, at some of them they have um, uh, more dogs and so they may have uh, two dogs per handler. But uh, at most of them we, we try to have one, mm -hmm. one handler per one dog. I can certainly hear the excitement in your voice here. So. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and Jenny, she, uh, she, she sleeps most of the time? Or? Um, most of them mm -hmm. uh, sleep most of the time, especially the re retired racers themselves. Uh, they've spent their time running. Uh, they like to get out in the morning mm -hmm. and uh, do their thing, come in, maybe have their uh, breakfast, and they um, might go back out for a quick few minutes. Uh, they, their uh, attention span at times, they can get bored very quickly uh, sometimes. So the, you don't want to uh, leave them out exposed to the cold, for one. Yeah. And the um, being bored can cause them to uh, chew. Ah. So uh, if you're going to leave them for a length, of, any real length of time, um, most of the uh, people who don't um, put their dog in like a, a crate environment, mm -hmm. which is, uh, is what they are uh, in at the uh, uh, environment on the track, um, they'll put a uh, muzzle so that they can't chew on, on your furniture. Yeah, I was wondering why you, uh, when you came, I saw you with one of those and I thought, oh. And that, yeah, that uh, was partly for her protection mm -hmm. inside inside the vehicle, You're right. uh, mm -hmm. um, where she could uh, chew on something that might chip a tooth. That's true. Yeah. Or, or um, if you're carrying more than one, um, maybe one might uh, kind of lose balance and uh, maybe step on Snap, somebody's yeah. toes. So you, you get somebody who might uh, decide yeah. that. And uh, so it's mainly it's mainly a protection. A protection item, and it's more a protection item for them, and maybe a protection item for your your be belongings or valuables. Yeah, well, that uh, I, I'm glad you brought that up because usually, as people see a dog with a muzzle and think, yeah, they it's automatically think and, it's and vicious. The rest and of the story is just not non-existing. Yeah. So I'm glad we yeah, and that's brought and that's, that in there. and that's that's definitely not the case with the yeah with the uh, greyhounds. Yeah, and. Uh, just a regular diet. Well, uh, typically, when the dog comes off the track, you you uh, you're going to want to because the dog is uh, coming up and coming off at racing weight, mm -hmm. and you're going to want to uh, have it uh, pick up some weight. Uh, typically, around five pounds, maybe seven pounds, depending. Um, about six cups a day, and so you would divide that into two feedings. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, two and a half to three cups in the morning and then another two and a half to three cups in the afternoon or evening. Um, you can um, supplement that uh, during the day with uh, treats if mm -hmm. you wish. Uh, I, I believe in uh, allowing our dogs to have treats, but I don't give them to them every day. I do about yeah. I do about three times a week. Yeah, I, a lot of the friends, they when they eat, they give it to doggy, you know. And, and we so, and so we so do it with the. So is table food okay, you know, for treats? We don't we don't we don't we don't do much with the uh, uh, table scraps. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually buy uh, the doggy treats, or we buy a uh, processed doggy meat, and we we cut it up and and, and bag it and freeze it, or um, just the, even the little uh, rawhide naga hide bones that you can buy. Uh, just something uh, for them that is out of the ordinary that they don't get every day. Yeah, so I take it uh, adopting a, a greyhound has been a very good experience for you? Uh, very positive. Positive. And, and mm -hmm. I, I hope to uh, stay involved with the uh, greyhounds for many years to come. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we'll adopt another one. I know <laughs> we, have, yeah, yeah. Uh, we know people who have as many as five. Yeah. And uh, with our other dogs, I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because because they all have to be indoors, and our other dogs are indoor dogs also, and we also have four cats. Yeah, well, that's that's a good so, point to have to have them inside. So that's all the another time. thing that mm -hmm. you, you you want to uh, uh, be sure of is uh, whether they're going to be compatible with the the uh, 
other animals that you're going to have in uh, your family. That's why it's Im important that when the uh, dogs come to us that we get them into uh, foster homes and uh, see just uh, exactly uh, what their needs and wants are going to be and uh, whether or not they have a uh, prey drive. Some do and some don't. It, you know, uh, cats won't bother them, small dogs won't bother them, and uh, some, uh, it won't bother them inside, but if it's an outdoor cat, and yeah. then it might be a, a different story. So no dog house for you, Jenny. I don't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she, she's just just happy and just waiting for her home. It's, it's, it's her turn. It's her turn. On an average, how many dogs are you able to save? Um, Greyhound Pets Inc. since uh, since its uh, founding has, uh, I believe it's it's in the thousands. I can't give in you as but it's in the thousands uh, since its founding in the uh, early 1990s. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in the thousands, and I can't give you a specific number. Mm -hmm. I wish I knew what that number was. Uh, I can only tell you that since I've been involved in the uh, three years, we've had 37, 38 that have physically come through our home mm -hmm. just and then and and that's in the uh, three years so they and all of those that have come through our home have been placed so we're, we're very happy with that yes yeah, pretty mm -hmm. wonderful when we open our heart and our homes to um, to uh, beings of all mm -hmm. of all species and uh, animals are so spiritual uh, mm -hmm. have, have you ever noticed that they, they hear things they know things mm-hmm Long uh, before we get yes. to it. Um, you know, there's uh, one other thing that we haven't addressed, and that's uh, the adapting to uh, home life once they leave the track. Uh, on most tracks, there are no steps. Ah. They don't know how to do steps. They have to be taught to mm -hmm. walk up and down stairs uh, because they, it's just not an obstacle that has been, that you know, yeah. been uh, presented to them. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, they don't. They don't know about being in a home and being, uh, you know, letting letting you know when they need to go out or it because they are given and taken out uh, for their for their breaks at any uh, mm -hmm. given time. And they they you know, for the majority they they won't mess where they have to lay. And mm -hmm. so at the racing environment, uh, they are pretty much on a schedule. Yeah. Certain times of the day, they're they're let out, and then they do what they what they what they need to do, and so that's what we need to do with them is we need to work with them adjust and to adjust to them yeah. and help them adjust to our schedule as well as us adjust to their mm -hmm. schedule, and uh, so uh, we we tell uh, all of those that are be becoming new parents mm -hmm. that uh, the first few days let it out as frequently as possible. Mm -hmm. um, we tr what we like to do is to uh, be able to, uh, if someone has their weekend uh, Friday through Sunday, uh, or there are those that have them uh, Tuesday to Thursday during the week, but uh, we try to give them at the beginning of their weekend so that they have the days, a couple of days to uh, help work with a uh, schedule where if people are going to be there and be able to spend time with the dog and the dog's not going to go and the very next day spend uh, five, six hours by itself. Yeah. And I know uh, when a person isn't feeling well, the animals are so sensitive, which brings me to the point where I need to tell a friend, thank you for all your well wishes while I had my um, my little leg problem here that we addressed in the last two weeks. I'm not going to lift it and show it to you because that's too close to Jenny's head, so I'm just <laughs> going to leave it like it is. But the friend's just been wonderful in... Um, you know, run, to run errands and take me places, and mm -hmm. and uh, and I have two kitties, and they sort of know when I don't feel well. Mm -hmm. And people, the, the animals are just so sensitive, just really wonderful. Well, gee, I, I hope that you're going to, um, like I said, that you're going to be involved in this for a long time. Mm -hmm. That we add more people, you know, to the mm -hmm. list of friends. If they, if they, if they, if they, anyone out there would, would mm -hmm. like to. Uh, help uh, no matter how, uh, whether uh, being a uh, foster, whether coming and maybe helping at a booth mm -hmm. uh, to uh, handle dogs during a meet and greet, 
or maybe they just have items that they want to donate, or maybe they just would like to make a donation. Mm -hmm. Um, now, is, is Jenny still up for adoption? Yes, she, no, Jenny she is. is currently still up for adoption. Yeah. Um, we're hoping that, uh, that uh, her, her turn is coming soon. Um, she, you know, she had her uh, little needs and wants that had to be addressed, but mm -hmm. uh, now she's, now she's uh, healthy and she's uh, ready to uh, go into a, a home. She, she will need to uh, go to a home, though, where uh, she's the only dog. Mm -hmm. uh, she wouldn't, she wouldn't uh, uh, want to uh, give up her alpha position. She, it's not so much that she's an alpha, but she's been uh, uh, one where um, she might not get along with the uh, other dogs. The other dogs, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, you know, when you change from one environment to another, so mm -hmm. that's really understandable. Mm -hmm. So if anybody out there is interested in adopting Jenny, she's certainly been in joy since, uh, you know, mm -hmm. this last hour since we've met her. And um, just a beautiful animal. And uh, I'm really happy that you was, you know, willing to accommodate no, me on I'm, such short notice. I'm very, I'm, I'm very glad that you uh, asked me to come. <coughs> Yeah. I was more than happy to uh, come and give you some information and, yeah, and do we'll, the program for you. We'll get the message out and just, like I said, add more and more mm -hmm. friends to the list. And yeah. um, and also, you, you are listed with PetSmart, you said. Yes. Um, uh, mm -hmm. You have an information board as a register? Uh, well, it's a, what it is is, is a board, it's a, a calendar and it just lists the dates that uh, we're going to be there and the times that we'll be there. And then while we're there, we have our applications and, and everything uh, there at the uh, PetSmart for uh, anyone who wishes to uh, come in and uh, volunteer their services. Mm -hmm. We can sign them up at that time. Yeah. Or they can uh, give us a call. Yeah, and, and PetSmart being a, uh, I think it's a, it's a chain, so I would assume that they're pretty much all over the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and can, mm -hmm. yeah, they're national. Can get a hold of people. And uh, so, as you can see, our set is a little different today than usual because Jenny and I, we had to have room for our feet, you know? <laughs> and um, it's certainly been a, a, a nice visit that we had. Any personal thoughts you like to leave the friends with? No. If you can help, help. We can use all the help we help can get. Can get yeah. Yeah. And I did all that for a change <laughs> because, <laughs> you, because it's really hard to, to um, do, do things, you know. Um, and so, again, we hope we brought you uh, something that's of interest to you. And we're going to um, probably see you again next week. And uh, again, thank you for coming. Give oh. my regards to your wife. Oh, and thank you very much. Yeah, um, I was very glad to be here. Yeah, so what do you say, Jenny? Jenny? Are you just going to sleep or are Jenny? you going to stand up for me? Jenny. Yeah. Jenny, come on. Come uh, on. There you go. It'll take us come a on, minute baby. to have her stand up for us. Come on, baby. Say bye-bye, Jenny. Yeah. Come on. Come on. There you go. Oh, it's yeah. looking the wrong way, but that's okay.